Well, welcome everybody. Welcome to uh, to Labo Cine, to this platform that celebrates science uh, through cinema in many different ways, in documentary and fiction, um, in many hybrid forms. Uh, I'm Alexi Gambus. I'm the founder of the platform, and um, we're very excited to have Carlos Bardem and Alvaro Long Longoria Hello. today with us. Um, welcome, welcome to both of you um, to speak about this amazing film called. Sanctuary that we have the honor of showing for the month of February as part of our issue called La Movida Científica, um, an amazing film that feels very timely for what's, you know, um, unfortunately many horrible things happening in our world right now and, um, and a lot to learn still. Um, but welcome to both of you and, and thanks for being here. It's a pleasure to be with, to be with you and uh, look forward to, 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 to your questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're really happy to thank you for giving us the chance to speak about Sanctuary and whatever you want to ask. Yeah, so, so first of all, Alvaro, where, where, are you, um, where are you these days? Where are you both, starting with Alvaro, where, where are you during these pandemic times? Uh, no, we are stuck in Spain, Madrid. Uh, we have not stopped working. Fortunately, because Spain is, especially Madrid, is a bit uh, lax on the on the restrictions. But uh, we are here. We're in Madrid. Yes, I'm in Madrid too. You're both in Madrid, and I happen to also be in Madrid. So we're all uh, we're all in the same city. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure we can meet. I, I'm not sure it's <laughs> allowed for us to meet, but we are very close. <laughs> Socially distanced, well, but we're all, we're all in the same um, in the same city. Well, um, sadly, sadly, in Madrid, almost everything is permitted. It shouldn't be like that. I know, I know. I would just want to you have more time. restrictions. And speaking about climate change, the weather is uh, is amazing these days in in Madrid, and it's uh, it goes from like a snowstorm a few weeks ago to, you know, over like fourteen degrees Celsius today. So the weather has been a, uh, is been going from very hot to very cold uh, very abruptly in in Madrid. Yeah, you can tell. You can tell just watching. I have a I have a terrace, a little terrace, and I have my plants, and they are totally crazy. They're <laughs> they're blossoming out of time or, or before the time they should be blossoming. We just uh, leave behind uh, the 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 biggest snow 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 storm, in, yeah, storm in in a century or since we have registers or data about this. And now we have uh, like, uh, I don't know, it's uh, like 16 degrees, sunny. But I find it, I find it particularly funny that uh, everybody comes and says, ah, what's going on? The weather is so strange, the weather is so weird, you know? And, uh, and, it's, and I always tell, tell people, but haven't you been listening? I mean, we'll be talking about this for, for the last 15 years, you know, we're yeah. going towards, this is only the beginning and, uh, and there's people, and people are still not making the connection. That's kind of interesting. No? That they say, "Ah, what's going on? The weather is so weird." But still, we go and buy some plastic. And <laughs> well, we take, we, take we, our we, car. We, we have we have a still to deal with these guys, negationists, negationists, yeah. and about climate uh, climate change. That the, when the when we have this uh, big snowstorm, they're saying, "Ah, where is the the the, the global warming?" Yeah, yeah. It's just not a lot. It's, it's I, I remember there, there was a comment from you know from the past president of the U.S. Uh, uh, that I won't even mention at this point, but he he mentioned <laughs> like, oh look look how cold it is. You know why is everybody speaking about global warming when it's so freezing outside? And so clearly doesn't understand even the concept of what of what global warming um, means. Yeah, it's yeah. clear that there is a need of, of for a further education of the of the general public. I mean we cannot. Uh, simplify this to people just not not uh, caring or not paying attention or, or being uh, uneducated. I think that there is a bigger problem than that. I think that and that's why one of the reasons why we made this documentary, you know, because we, we think that people need to to get the information in order to make their own decisions, you know. Yeah. And if you simplify everything to a Twitter message, then it has to be simplified by definition, no? And people yeah. need information in order to make up their minds and to know what is really going on. And that's yeah. where sanctuary pretty much came from. Well, let, let's go. Let's go back because you're you're both fascinating, you know, individuals because you both have 
multiple facets to to your career. Alvaro, you're you're a producer. You know, obviously, you've made a few documentaries. Um, I remember the Sons of Clouds, also about the refugees in, in the Sahara Desert. Um, and then Carlos, I mean, you're an actor. Um, you're also, of course, a, a writer and, and and involved in many ways. Can can you talk a little bit about? Um, you know, of course, there's also Javier Bardem that's in the mix as well in this, but let's talk a little bit about how you both decided to work together, um, because I feel like this project started, you know, as a conversation between both of you. I know, Carlos, you had a relationship also with the Greenpeace before you went to the Arctic. Um, how, oh, did it, how, did it, how did it start? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the seed of uh, all this uh, comes from a uh, Three, four years before, Alvaro, I don't know, I'm, I'm not really good at dates. Alvaro, uh, Alvaro and I, we, we went to the Arctic, to the, let's see, the North Pole with Greenpeace, and he made an, an amazing uh, short documentary called Esperanza. It was more focused uh, about the, the life in the, in, in the Greenpeace boats and the crews and whatever. But we get in contact and we make good, really good friendship and a collaboration uh, with uh, the people of Greenpeace in, in Spain, the Madrid office. And so when they invite us to go to the Antarctica, we, we, we have the, this in mind, especially Alvaro. Alvaro was the, he, he's, he's the one who, who's going to tell you better. But, but we yeah, had the idea that, okay, well, what, what we can do with this? We, we, we are cinema people. Okay, let's do a movie. We are yeah. not. We're not uh, in science. Yeah. This is not a duty, but yeah. we can we can show this to people. And as Salvador said before, make our biggest effort in 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 order to to bring this beauty, this the threats that are the, uh, against this beauty uh, to the to the general audience. Maybe in a more um, mm, uh, broad way that uh, that science and specialized publications of the forums and circles and that, that's what uh, that, that, that was our, our idea yes yeah. I think that that our trip to uh, to the Arctic was was kind of a game changer for Greenpeace Greenpeace had been an activist uh, organization basically focused on hanging themselves from nuclear plants or stopping uh, fishing vessels. And this had been very working very well, but at one point they decided that they had to invite, you know, uh, celebrities in order to get their message to other people. No? Mm -hmm. Not always uh, try to 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 preach to the converted. Yeah. Um, and that's when we, well, Carlos and Alberto Aman were invited. I was invited as a filmmaker, and we made the documentary uh, short. And at that time, they, they, that was the first time I, I heard or I started thinking about the sanctuary in the Antarctica. In yeah. 1992, as you know, the, the Greenpeace action made it possible for Antarctica to become a land sanctuary. The continent is protected since 92, thanks to the Madrid Treaty. And that was partially uh, due to the labor or to the work of Greenpeace. So at that point, we started thinking about, about the documentary or a new documentary, a new project. In fact, in that trip, we made some interviews already, but at the end, we, we came back and we kind of forgot. And then when, they, when Greenpeace decided to go back to Antarctica and they called Javier and Carlos, uh, immediately the, the, the project re revived. No? And it was since the beginning very clear that it was a great opportunity to, to tell a story that most people don't know. Yeah, so, so Alvaro, so let me ask you a little bit about that. So, you know, you had this idea of, um, of making a film, and as Carlos was saying, the idea was, you know, you you think a lot with visuals, and you know, this idea of making a film on on this trip was one of the big ideas behind it. But did you have a, an idea of how you wanted to construct the story? Because of course, there's, you know, what's what's amazing about the film is that you have, you know, what I what I particularly love about it is also the relationship between the two brothers, right, Carlos and and Javier, and. <laughs> Because that, that's a big part of it also, which gives us kind of very personal um, connection to it. And then of, of course, after the, after the expedition, you see Carlos and Javier also speaking about their experience together. Um, but then you also have the, the more kind of policy aspects. Um, you know, you also have the, the beautiful footage of the Antarctic. 
did you decide to go there with a specific plan or was it more just like let's go there and let's just document and it's follow funny. Javier and Carlos in, in, in this environment? It's yeah, a, what, what was the yeah? It's a great question because obviously before we went to the to the to the trip, uh, I we tried to get some financing for the film. Uh, and people say, well, but what's the script? No? So I, I say, okay, I'm going to write something up, you know, because I don't know what the hell is going to, what is going to happen. And, and I tried to put something together. And uh, that's discussing with Carlos and Javier, uh, we decided that the best thing was to do like a making off of the, of the campaign. You know? So mm. follow them, they represent the audience and just follow the story uh, and keep on going. I, I think I learned that from, from doing documentaries with Oliver Stone that I produced a few and he always yeah. said, follow the story, follow the story, follow the story. So I said, okay, let's follow the story and, uh, and let's see where it takes us. We didn't know what was going to happen. We knew what the mission was, but we said, okay, we, we, will, we will be those, uh, those uh, regular people, not activists, but regular people that suddenly fall into this mission and try to make a difference. Uh, and hopefully the audience will connect. Mm. Yeah, we, 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 try, we, yeah. we try to yeah. represent on board uh, the regular people, regular audience. I think that, that that was the best way to 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 get to a wider audience, to mm. be one of them, to mm. say, OK, we don't know very much about this. Let's follow the people who knows and, uh, yeah. and let them show us what's going on here. And we're not shoot everything. I think I think we shoot a lot anyway. We should love them. <laughs> it was like it was like a puzzle. A puzzle look, we, th we said, "Look, we have Javier Bardem, we have a submarine, we have penguins. We, you know, an how icebreaker, an icebreaker, <laughs> penguins, and Javier Bardem. So, it's a big production. So, kind of. So, let, let's get into this. Uh, these, this kind of brother relationship that you know, because um, I was listening a lot about the film, and I, I want to tackle this because I think it's it's an interesting angle to it. So how did you convince Javier to be to be part of this um, experience? Because it was how long were you there for? Was it was it eight months? Was that no? How long was the trip to the Antarctic? No, it was like uh, 12, twelve days. Twelve, 12, oh, 12 days. days. Okay, okay. Was it eight, eight no, 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 months? No, was, was it? Was it? I mean, the, the whole campaign took. Uh, oh, the whole campaign was that right? The whole campaign. But the whole campaign. That's why I think, for, let, let me say first, that, that, that's why I think the movie is interesting because from a political point of view, yeah. it shows really clear that uh, no matter individual efforts uh, against the climate change that, that they are needed, that we need to do, that they are not enough. Mm. At the end, you always meet with the barrier of politicians. Politicians are the great issue about yeah. climate, uh, climate change. Yeah. Okay, so it was quite clear to us that we have to start from this amazing, beautiful environment under threat. Yeah. Take this information to the wider audience and follow the campaign. Mm. I mean, it's, it's not a, a science or a documentary about Antarctica. Yeah. I think it's a little bit more than this, or not only this. It's, it's more about the campaign. It's, a, it's more about a fight that we have to, to endure. Uh, and we have to keep, keep fighting. Mm. In March, one year ago, oh, uh, in February, one year ago, uh, main issue for many, many million, uh, for a lot of people in the world was climate change. Mm. So they came the pandemic. And now all the covers are right. on pandemic. But, but you know, you know, you know that pandemic is going to fail at some mm. point. It's going to mm. be under control, vaccines, blah, 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 whatever, better medical conditions. And, oh no, the pandemics have been along all the, the human canon story. Mm. They are not new, and there will be new pandemics. Yeah, and they, they come and they go. But this thing of the climate change. This is the ultimate challenge to us mm. as a species. Mm. So we try. We, we were working with this with these ideas, and about the brother, the brother relations uh, relationship between uh, me and my brother, we we, did, we 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 feel we felt really humble in the sense that uh, we are not uh, 
scientific people. Uh, we are not sci in, into science, really. Mm -hmm. So we, we cannot pretend to, to, to speak about things we don't know nothing. We don't know shit, really. <laughs> so what we can do, what we, we, can, we can try to bring some emotions, positive emotions, that can cause or, or, or unleash positive reactions. And tell to people like us, people that uh, they are not into really specialized uh, readings or articles or, or, or research, mm. and say, okay, look at this. This is beautiful, isn't it? Mm. It's, it's going to disappear. Mm. Yeah. We don't know. Maybe it sounds quite simple, like, like a level of talk. Mm. Thanks God we have a lot of scientific people in, in, in the ship and they, they know right, right. how to speak about this in, in a higher level. Mm. But I think that, that that's one of the reasons that the documentary is good and uh, makes function and fulfill his what, purpose. What I, what I think is great though, Carlos, and I, I think it's great is that it goes back and forth between, you know, between speaking about the campaign, you know, mm -hmm. speaking about what is what is happening, speaking about having the scientists also speak about what's happening. And then once in a while you have these scenes in it, which is about, you know, well, Javier Barden going into the submarine, the, you know, the relationship between both of you. So even in moments where it gets into more of the, of the cause, you, you, you balance it out quite well with, with these other elements. And I think that helps people, you know, that are obviously, as you said, you know, with the pandemic, you know, we've had multiple pandemics What's interesting about global warming and climate change is that, you know, sometimes people are focused about it and then they lose interest. It's kind of like this very cyclical. People are not, you know, as long as it doesn't affect their personal life, they, they somehow don't respond immediately. And I think that this film, because it was able to kind of connect the personal with the larger cause, I think it really had an impact in terms of understanding, you know, that there was kind of the, the small, the kind of the personal intimate aspect and then the larger picture about okay, what what can we do, and how how can we be part of of the of this change? Um, and Alvaro, when, when you were when you were on the actual amazing green piece, you know, but I know that you were. I was listening to a few of the interviews. You you were seasick at times with 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 everybody, and I remember listening to you speaking about how you and Javier at some points were um, were sick. Did you have an idea? Of course, you also had a limited crew, right, in terms of how you were actually yes, I, I think that was the most for me the, the biggest challenge no when we were up finally uh, decided to go uh, on the on the ship they came and said you know what there's only three places for you two alvaro carlos and javier and <laughs> i say what about my crew <laughs> yeah. what about my, DP said, no. and my sound yeah no, the the penguins. you had the penguins as well you had the penguins yes so so that was a, a really a challenge great, great helpers great helpers <laughs> The penguins. Yeah, we had, we had to essentially, we had to essentially uh, improvise. I, I did a crash course on on uh, camera operating. I'm not a, a camera operator, and obviously Carlos and Javier have lots of experience, but they're not either uh, experts in sound or anything. But we had to do everything ourselves. Thank God, within the Greenpeace crew, because Greenpeace is an organization that is essentially organized through communicating messages. No, so they had some a few uh, people there on the crew that helped us a lot and they had a drone that we used for some of the most beautiful shots and it was really amazing i think it's it's interesting now when you look back towards the technical aspects of the film one thing that there's there's no darkness so you never stop shooting so we were shooting like 20 hours a day <laughs> or 24 hours a day and uh, yeah, it was tough because consider there were two challenges. The boat always has an engine running, so that's a problem for sound. Yeah. Yeah. And it moves a lot, not only when the weather was terrible, which was essentially impossible to shoot because the, the, it's a it's an icebreaker. The whole it has no keel, therefore, yeah. essentially moves all it's over. It's like a bone. Them. It's like a bone. Oh, it's a crazy. That's why they call it the not washing not washing by the ice. <laughs> wow. so it's called it's the the Arctic sunrise called the washing machine because of that no so it's very okay. hard to shoot when it's essentially moving everywhere but yeah we got a lot of help and and the beauty of the of the experience was that the Greenpeace crew immediately we formed part of the crew no so we were 
from the moment we arrived there, we were essentially another member of the crew. It was not Javier was special or Carlos was special. We did pretty much everything else, uh, that everybody else was doing. And uh, and that was, that helps a lot because suddenly all the issues are put aside. No, You're just focusing on the mission. That's it. Yeah. So you, and to some extent, you were also part of that mission. I mean, I know I know, Carlos, you were saying that you were not scientists, but you were you were very integrated into that kind of environment, right? Into that kind of experience on yeah, on that. And that and Greenpeace people help us a lot in this sense, and what it helps a lot too is to have a clear notion of a, what what is my mission. This yeah, yeah. I'm not a scientist. Yeah, I can communicate. Yeah, this this I have to focus on that. And I think yeah. that, that that's why this uh, this uh, this film Sanctuary that has been traveling a lot all, all around the world is working so well because it really touched something in people's emotions. Yeah, and that yeah. was our main goal. Yeah, so we, we 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 are not specialists in this. We are not scientists, but we can talk to people. Yeah, this, I'm, I'm I mean, it's, 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 sorry, just, just I just said yeah, this. Is 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 a form of activism. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And and tell me a little bit, well, I'm, I wanna get to that. I wanna get to how the film has helped with the activism and, and has been uh, traveling around the world. Um, but I wanted to ask one more thing about the, the film itself. The, the idea of the voiceover, which I, which I find to be extremely powerful, you know, um, because it kind of gives this, this like personal anchor as you're watching these like, you know these landscapes and the Antarctic, and 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 it also kind of gives this kind of timelessness to it, right? Like this yeah. urgency, but also it's 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 really beautiful. It almost reminds me a little bit of like the the um, like uh, Patricio Guzman, you know, like Nostalgia para la Luna, like these beautiful um, voiceovers. I was wondering if that was something that you came up with. At what point did with this idea of having Javier? Well Carlos was actually, who is a, a scriptwriter, uh, also of the of the film, um, was writing a diary for I don't know for who you were writing this diary every day. I was writing for a, for a newspaper, a digital newspaper in Spain, a diary, a and diary that, of the of, of on board of the days of uh, navigation. And it was a beautiful uh, way of explaining oh. our day to day with a kind of a poetic or a fant not fant poetic uh, point of view, no? And uh, so we immediately decided that some of those texts had to be there. And also it helped uh, to have uh, the reflection you know, of what was going on, because when you're in, in this trip for 12 days, you're so overwhelmed at what is going on that you don't have time to sit down and say, okay, what's going on really, no? And there was a specific moment at the end. But of the what, what we have seen, you yes. realize the powerful and the beauty of uh, we we have seen days yeah. days after, yes. as as Alvaro say, perfectly say, we were overwhelmed, yeah, totally yeah. overwhelmed. Yeah, well, I there's a moment in the film I remember where Javier is speaking to us, and then he says, "Oh my God, I'm seeing a whale. There's a whale, like right at the corner." He's like, "I, yeah. he's like, it's too much. I, it's too much information for me to." Yeah, yeah it was. It, yeah. it was a kind of of. Uh, Stendhal syndrome, <laughs> but yeah. but in, in the nature, you know. At, at, at the second day, you were you cannot uh, you cannot count how many whales you were saying all the yeah. time. Whatever you mean, uh, uh, groups of 12, 14, 16. Yeah, and yeah. You know. But also, uh, it allowed us dramatically. It allows for the audience also to take a break and to to same, the same thing that was happening to us i think the audience needed that no and yeah. there was a moment that we call the blade runner moment which is when we are disembarking um, mm -hmm. our inspiration was the final speech from blade runner movie um, <laughs> where javier is essentially uh, trying to analyze what was going on but the war is just getting started no i think that is for me is my favorite moment in the movie no when okay we're off the, the boat it's been great whatever this is just beginning, you know. <laughs> and yeah. that, beginning. Some people say I should finish the film there. I know you cannot because the real war is not on the Greenpeace boat. Greenpeace boat is kind of like a, a marvelous world where everybody has one mission, but the reality is that the world is not. Yeah, like the that. real war is, is outside yeah. the boats. Yeah, absolutely. It's in the parliaments, it's in the committees. Is there? So let, 
let's talk a little bit about that because of course the, the film, which I thought was also fascinating is that despite, you know, despite having, you know, a crew and despite having, you know, you know, Alvaro and Carlos and Javier and all these people on the boat and also having people with, with a certain status being able to, to speak about these issues, we're still confronted to policymakers, to governments, to, you know, pol political economic interests, you know, as, as I think Javier was mentioning that at the end of the day, you need to choose your elective officials. You need to make sure that they protect your interests. Um, and I was just curious to, to know a little bit about, you know, how has this film, of course, at the end of the film, we, we understand that, you know, we haven't yet been able to declare this area as, um, as a sanctuary and protect it. But I'm curious to know a little bit about, because now it's been what, it's been two years, two and a half years? Two and a half years. The, yeah, we started two years ago, actually, uh, because we premiered in Toronto two years in ago. Toronto, yeah. And then you were in Toronto and then and then San Sebastian as well, right? And mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so tell us a little bit about how, yeah, how have things changed since, you know, since the, the relatively grim ending of the film, which is like, well, we need to do more. And I think uh, that conversation where Javier is on the Skype and he's like, well, what, what else can we do? You know, what, what's next? Um, what what has happened since? since I think the fact yeah. that the the mission got so many uh, people to sign up and support it was a big thing. No, we managed to, apart from the documentary, but the the mission itself was a success because we I think the mission was supposed to have two million signatures, and as of today, I think it's much higher than that. I think four or more. I don't remember the, yeah. the number, but I mean there's a significant amount of people that decided to join the mission no? and um, i think it essentially gives voice and and people some some understanding of what can be done because it's not only and i think we are over these documentaries that tell you ah, the world's ending yeah. or you know this is terrible the poor polar bear is dying no i mean okay we're over that yeah what can we do about it and i yeah. think that's what the documentary is intended to show that a lot of people together can make a big difference yeah yeah, I, I think I think one of one of the conclusions I came I came to with uh, with my experience first in the Arctic after in the Antarctic with uh, with Greenpeace is, is that uh, as I say at the beginning the most effective uh, ecological uh, act you can do is boat yeah. yeah go to boat boat to the right people boat to the right parties. Mm. both to the people who has a real commitment with these issues yeah yeah it's good to go with your your electric bicycle no not eat meat and right. go to the, the grocery with your fabric bag yeah you have to do we have to do that it's, it's fine we do that we yeah. need to do that but it's not enough yeah and this is for me is what when i let's say i'm my my, my biggest pride about this movie is, is how how well they show it. Yeah. How well they show how all these people fighting, all these people singing up. Uh, and at the end, you clash against really gray shoot guys in yeah. a, a last committee in this in Tasmania. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And they have the and they have the power. Yeah. And and, and to some extent they're almost like invisible, right? Like you don't you don't actually you don't necessarily know who those people it's it's kind of like this. Yeah, it's kind of like you're 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 hitting a wall, um, and you have to kind of persist and persist and persist. Let's so, uh, as 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 Salvador said before, uh, 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 this is a propositive film in the sense. Okay, stop complaining. Let's do things. Yeah. We can do things yeah. as societies, as human beings, as individuals, yeah. as a species. Yeah. Let's focus uh, let's the, the targets and uh, let's go for it. Yes. Yeah. We had the opportunity to show the film during the climate conference that happened in Madrid. It was supposed to happen in Chile, but it happened in Madrid, no? And it, for me, that was also a, a marvelous moment. We had the film showing in the big screen in this conference full of all kinds of people, lots of companies publicizing how green they are when they are polluting. But anyway, that's another story. Yeah, yeah, they, there was they a war. 
Yeah, yeah. the greenwashing green was wash. brutal. The green yeah. But there was a wall, and on the other side, they were trying to reach an agreement. And essentially, mm -hmm. what was going on uh, on the other side of the wall was exactly the same thing that happened to, to the Weddell Sanctuary. No? Yeah. Uh, great talk, fantastic uh, intention, and then nothing. And uh, unless we, the, the public, the voters, manage to change that, or it's never going to change because there's so much at stake, there's so much money, there's so much uh, 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 embedded interests in the economy uh, that uh, force this crazy race of unlimited growth based on limited resources that by definition cannot happen. But th there's so much people making money about it that unless we together do something, it's con going to continue and it will continue until we all... <laughs> Essentially, yeah. come disappear. Yeah, that, that, Mars. <laughs> that, that's why I think I think Sanctuary as the film, as an activist film, uh, fulfill his purpose in the sense that it makes a special efforts on the youngest people. Yeah, yeah. And the youngest people, they are the ones to suffer this more, yeah. obviously, but they are the ones to so, to 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 bring to came out with a solution to this. Yeah. And the solution has to be political. It has That's to it. be a political one. So, I mean, the great thing about a film, Carlos and Alvaro, is that it can play in festivals, it can play at climate change conferences. It, it has this ability of, it's like, a, you know, not to use the word virus, because of course we're in the middle of a pandemic, but <laughs> it has this way, this way of spreading, right? It, it has many ways in which it can reach people, of course, through, you know, also through the internet. Um, have you, have you noticed any, you know, any hope in terms of a global treaty? I mean, like, let's speak about the actual issue about about the Weddell Sea and about this area that that needs to be protected and the Isn't overfishing. That... Has there has there been any progress since the film has been made, or do you, do you feel like you've been shaking those those politicians a bit, or <laughs> well, like I think China, that China, the... China, Russia, and Norway, and th those countries that are <laughs> that are providing? Well, the... China, Russia. China, Russia, Norway, uh, thanks God. No, God, God has nothing to do with this, but, <laughs> uh, but thanks, whatever. The orange guy went yeah. away. Yeah. So it's really important that the Biden's uh, presidency goes back to the Paris agreements and all Paris these things yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and can meet with the objectives of the 2030 agenda. Yeah. This is the way From, to change things. Yeah. From Greenpeace point of view, I think that the, the mission was very, very illustrative. I think it was a war, it was a battle within the war. And after the, the Weddell Sanctuary uh, drama, uh, let's say, put it that way, that um, at the end, um, it's a bit, a bit of a spoiler, but it doesn't work out as well as it should have. But that not, helped. Not a happy ending, not a happy ending. But it helped uh, Greenpeace realize that they had to take the battle elsewhere. So they took the battle. In fact, we went with the movie and we showed it also at the United Nations. Mm -hmm. uh, and now the battle is at the United Nations, which is a much curious, it's, 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 it's a much higher level. It's at a higher level. And the war now is uh, about creating this uh, ocean treaty, which 61 countries support, which means creating 30% of the high seas as protected sanctuaries. No? That is mm -hmm. a huge, uh, change and, and it's I mean the, we're talking about maybe a hundred times bigger than what we were, what we were wait, fighting for I think that is the way yeah. to do it I mean we have now to go to the big big drastic changes because I mean it's well it is just a small example no and it worked very well to prove the point but at the end the solution is not by creating a sanctuary in, in Antarctica you need to to protect the whole yeah, they say stop using our, our high seas like dumpsters. So, exactly. yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, Antarctica was obviously it's important, but as I was say, it's, it's uh, I, I, I want to strengthen this point. Uh, the movie and Greenpeace show the same thing. You have to be more ambitious. Yeah. You have to overcome this committee of yeah. little greenshoot men yeah. in yeah. Tasmania. You have no, you have no to woman. scale. Yeah. No, no woman in that committee. That's fascinating. <laughs> no, no, it's yeah, something it to, th to think about. It's yeah, only men. Yeah. Only men. Look at the faces in the movie. And you, <laughs> you can make a portrait, <laughs> psychological portrait of the guys. And 
<laughs> okay, this is important. We fail in this in this small battle, but this is a yeah. huge war to win. Yeah, and if Actually, you win, really, you have to go to the heads. That's a really good point. Is that if you if you if you fail in a small battle, then you may just well may as well go for the war, like for the war, like to like like you, you know that maybe like if you're working on a small scale, that maybe the solution is just to go to the to the source, you know, to the actual source of it. Yeah, it's a global issue. So if you, you can work as, uh, locally, of course, and it's good. It's, it's always the same. It's it's the scales. You yeah. can work individually, locally, but at the end, this is a global issue, yeah. and we need global solutions. And global solutions depends on politics. Yeah. And the truth is, so, a lot of people said, ah, what a pity that the film doesn't end up in a high and marvelous, <laughs> happy moment. No, no. But, but see, that you, represents... you, would need, you would need a sequel, like Sanctuario Numero Dos. Yes, we will. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the truth is that that is what's going on. Everybody wants this to change. I mean, any I, I cannot believe these politicians that have kids or have grandsons don't feel the same way. But the forces, the, the, the inertia is so strong that even individual uh, the individual opinions are overwhelmed by the power of money essentially yeah. and that is yeah. what unless we can break that that uh, circle we are we are not going to solve it yeah i mean there is a sense of i think with climate there's a sense you know to play devil's advocate there's a devil's advocate is that the individual sometimes feels like the bit the issue is so big that they don't know how you know how to actual tackle it and, and kind of this idea of kind of a collective um endeavor but i wanted to ask you i wanted to ask you something about you as, as artists right as as directors and, and filmmakers and actors and writers how do you feel when you show the film you know and you show it in festivals and especially when you show it in festivals i'm sure people ask you like what what can i do they go like, Carlos, what can I do to change things? <laughs> yeah. and, and even though you say that you don't want to be a scientist, because you are the people that have made this film, people turn to you because they can speak to you, right? They can, they have maybe an easier time to speak to you than, you know, than a scientist or a politician. They can be like, or or even, you know, or Javier, they would be like, well, what, what can I do to, to make a change? And how do you feel about having that role? Of, of also being answering those those questions and those you know those well let me let me let me put it this way when when someone come to, came to me and say what can i do i'll say well, okay first go to the first greenpeace office in your in your hometown yeah. <laughs> and ask to the guys who knows what you can do yeah. second next elections local elections country elections read the programs don't vote, don't vote for the guy because he, I always vote for this guy or uh, is more sympathetic to me or whatnot. Read the programs. Mm. Look for the green issues, mm. the envir environment, uh, climate uh, uh, proposals and whatever. Mm. Mm -mm. Use your vote. It's the only, it's the, unfortunately, it's the only thing we can do. Yeah. Vote, I mean, I... mobilize and protest. Yeah. And the truth is that everybody has the power to do something. Each one of us has the power to do something different. But if we all yeah. try to do what we can do, then things will happen. And we as filmmakers have the power, and film is a very powerful tool, as you know, um, to, to affect or to at least educate people to have an opinion. And uh, I think that is not only a power, but also a responsibility. I think yeah. both uh, Carlos, Javier, and myself, we feel the same way that we have to use that power and that responsibility in a positive way. Um, yeah. I, I, I many times feel that the industry, the cinema industry and the audiovisual industry has lost that uh, idea that they can, they have to take the, the, the seat of a lot of uh, other uh, um, things that used to happen in the past where people were getting educated by reading books or by reading uh, uh, extensive uh, newspaper article. That's gone. People are not reading that. They don't. They don't read books. They don't. And, and think documentaries and films have the power to give people uh, that gap or to fill that gap of uh, of knowledge that every obviously everybody is uh, facing. No. And uh, and I think that has to be taken seriously. And it's our duty to do that and to continue to do that. Our duty yeah. and our and our, our duty and our privilege. It's a privilege. 
it's it's true it's also a privilege to be able to do that and and also this idea that you have to persist right you have to keep going you can't just like it can't just be something that you do once you have to keep you know keep fighting and 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 have that what what has the relationship been with with greenpeace since the film came out is, is it because greenpeace is is for me is 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 amazing i mean the film also talks a little bit about you know the ups and downs of greenpeace and you know they were talking also about how you know in some cases they could prevent things you know greenpeace has just been you know has been through the ups and downs um but I, i'm wondering how you know how has that relationship evolved and of course i know that you you know do you have any plans to to continue working with them or was this just like um one kind of a one one-time thing with, with, with them. And um, I know that they also share the stage with you in some cases, speaking about the film. I'm, I'm, I'm curious to know a little bit more about um, how things have evolved with Greenpeace. Well, and with, I mean, no, yeah. for, for Greenpeace, this has been a, a different way of doing things. No? They, have, they were always very focused on the snapshot. That's how Greenpeace came to be what it, be, what it has, what it is today. No? by the snapshot, by the big uh, headline, and uh, or the very scientific report. No? We're feeling kind of falling between those two, and, uh, and the mass media uh, has tremendous access that they have realized now that they, they have to, to pay attention to, especially because they have lots of competition from people who are doing what they used to do in a better way, like ext Extinction Rebellion. Yeah. Extinction Rebellion are what Greenpeace was 25 uh, years ago. Yeah. So they have to reinvent. And uh, and I think Greenpeace is going through that process at the moment to, mm. to go and stay away from the people, as I say, from those that are already converted. Because mm. we have a tremendous, I don't know how many millions of people are Greenpeace members. And those yeah. people are absolutely convinced. And every time we do something, uh, they support us and it's great. The question is, how do you get to the people that are not Greenpeace members? No, that's the yeah. key. Yeah, yeah. I, feel, I feel like Greenpeace has been also what, what's fascinating is if we speak about science and arts, you know, and activism. I feel like Greenpeace has always been thinking also about how they can use artistic practices and how they can, you know, from like performance to staging, you know, manifest like manifestaciones. And Greenpeace has always been there in, in kind of these movements, and now. You know the power of film, the power of social media. As 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 Javier was mentioning, he's like, I've never been on social media, but now you know I see that there's an importance to it. That, as you were saying, Alvaro, that that they're realizing that they need to also change the way they they deliver their message um, to to make a difference. No. Um, yeah. Yeah, they have they have to put up today uh, the 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 tools. We 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 live in the social media times. I mean. This is good. This is helpful at the same time, and we, we, we live in this Twitter rhythm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What this uh, what this front cover today is gonna be old and forget in two days. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, we live in this uh, world of uh, millions, billions, trillions of short messages yeah. continually uh, going to and fro. Mm. No one of them really with really deep information. You have to dig deep if you want to get information. Yeah. There are, there are just front lines, headlines. Yeah. But if you, this is our time, yeah. you can like it or not, but this is our yeah. time. So we have to work with this. Yeah. And, and, this, it, yeah. and I think Greenpeace is doing, is doing, a, is doing, a, is changing itself to, to this, uh, to, to use these tools and to new languages that aren't really necessary, especially if you want to reach, as I was saying, not the converted, not the, not the people, not the parish in the church. You already have these guys. No, you have to, to go for the, for the others. Yeah. And how you reach these people by yeah. social media. Yeah, and by film and by, you know, and by these, these things. What, what, um, so just to close it out, I mean, I'm, I'm so excited to speak to both of you and, and it's, um, just such a privilege, also such a privilege to be speaking about these issues. Mm -hmm. um, but um, but since you you've worked together, you know, over the years, and of course you're you know you have this you know friendship and and long relationship working together. Um, yeah, what's next for 
for yeah for both of you and also maybe with the Javier. I don't know if I know Javier is shooting. Uh, did, did he shoot Dune already? Was he? Is that is that over? <laughs> uh, Javier is uh, Javier is uh, sh uh, shooting. Uh, he already has shoot the first part of Dune and he has many projects. But this Javier, they want to tell you. Really. Yeah, but I, I remember we can, that. We I remember can, that he... we can get murder if we talk too much <laughs> about those things. But, but what, speaking what is, about what ourselves, next, yeah. What is next ourselves. for both? What is next for both of you? Yeah, I'm I'm ready to this good friend of mine, a great Spanish producer, Alvaro Longoria, to be employed by him in any of his <laughs> multiple new projects. And uh, now nah, we're really good friends, and we we, we are lucky in the sense we. We, we keep ourselves busy in these hard times. It is good for the, not only for the rent that you have to pay, also yeah. for the mind. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm writing, I'm starting, uh, I'm doing a TV, a TV series here in Spain, and I'm gonna start a couple of movies in summer. And always ready for, uh, to the Greenpeace call. I mean, <laughs> it all <laughs> Carlos, since, we're, since, since we are, after all, you know, the, the, the idea of La Bocine is, to, um, is about scientific issues. Are, are you interested in tackling other scientific issues or, or mostly focusing on this one? Or is, is there other things that you would, you would be interested in kind of speaking, speaking up about in, in, in your own work, even in your writing? And um, as an actor, I'm, I'm just curious if, if this is something that you're like, oh, I think I, think I, I should... I, I would love to speak more about these issues before we get to, to Alvaro. I'm, I'm just interested in, in your relationship to science and, and environmental causes and, and these types of things. This, for you, Carlos, yeah. No, oh, for, for you, Carlos, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, 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 I'm, I'm a curious guy. You cannot be an actor and you cannot be a writer without some curiosity. I have a deep respect because of my age and my background in education to science. I mean, it's, it's a kind of, I think after the superstition and religion, the, the, the were, we left that behind. Yeah. Luckily, yeah. we have this new church that is science. Yeah. I totally favor, I totally, uh, I totally for science. I think it's, 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 it's the only way to, to save ourselves from ourselves. Yeah. yeah. I'm really interested in, in, science about, uh, I don't know if it's strictly, uh, in technological medias and all these things, how we communicate. Mm. Because I think we live in a, we live in interesting, in an interesting moment in the sense that uh, fascism somehow is there. Mm. Now fascists, they were Jackets and nice. Yeah, they, they have they have new uh, new disguises. Guys. <laughs> and uh, this social media world, you just saw it in in the USA with Donald Trump. Yeah. There's something to dig on this. Uh, how we communicate. This this is an aspect that I'm really interested in. Yeah. 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 The power we have to prevent. Work. We have to prevent, and we have to we have to somehow. I understand very well this mechanism as uh, as good as we can to prevent fascism. Yeah, or or and mis and of course misinformation, which has been such a well misinformation is a is a way to fascism. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, and Alvaro, I mean, you, you've been you know you've done documentaries with you know about like political issues, of course about you know about um, about Castro, and you've also worked with you you've done a lot of things about the social issues and the refugee and now tackling these kind of environmental issues what what's what's really next fascinating for you? i i yeah. me as a, not not only as a director but also as a producer i tried to make a, i i copy from uh, from an american production company movies that matter you know? yeah. i think every time i i face a project whether as a director or as a producer i try for it to have a message that can make people think and hopefully uh, it would be good for the for the, for them or for us. No? Uh, two two things that fascinate me is the nature of humans, how we are, you know, to understand how we can prevent ourselves from from destroying ourselves, anthropology essentially, and environment. I think that we are the, in need still for 
uh, new ways of talking about the environment. I think that, as I mentioned before, we are over the, the alert and the dramatic uh, end of the world is coming. Uh, but I think we have to really start digging into the science of what is really going on. I think that this simplification of what we discussed before, where this pandemic is coming from, uh, essentially what we've done to, to, the, to, the, to, the earth, to earth and whether new pandemics are coming, I think that is for me fascinating. And I think that uh, I always believe that uh, it's in the power of everybody to change things. No, If everybody is convinced uh, things will change and I'm an optimist mm -hmm. and I think they will, but they need to be as you said, you have to keep on insisting. So I have uh, another project uh, on environment that I'm working on at the moment that uh, tries to be that environment, let's say 3.0. Uh, and uh, I will continue because I think that for us really, all the other issues are great, but politics are of no importance, of no relevance if human ex becomes extinct. Right. <laughs> so yeah. first we have to save ourselves, then we can fix you know, politics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If there's one thing that we've learned from these like pandemics is like as 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 horrible as they are, it kind of brings us back to our own humanity, right? Because once our humanity is in danger, we we suddenly are becoming more aware of, of who we are and um and our relationship to the environment. So I think that's that's interesting in, in itself that we have to return to like who we are and 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 these types of things. Um well I'm I'm so excited to speak to both of you. I, I want to mention that Sanctuario, so obviously it's playing on our platform for a few more um, until the end of February. And, and we're so excited to be able to show it. Um, so if anybody wants to, to see the film, but where else can we, um, can we see the film? Is it, where, where else is it available right now? Well, it can be seen on, uh, on Amazon uh, worldwide. And in each Prime country. Video. Prime video. Never Amazon say, Prime never video. Say Sorry, Amazon. never say <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bezos <laughs> gets crazy. There's so, there are so many platforms now that it's like can be watched on Google Plus, on, on Prime Video, and yeah. yeah. Oh, and I think I think um, uh, that is a place to to watch it, and it continues to show. I mean, we just aired it on Spanish television, free television, a few days ago, yeah. and it was huge, mm. huge uh, uh, success. So mm -hmm. I think it's a it's a movie that is enjoyable. People have a great time watching it. They have fun with the Bardems and they enjoy the beautiful scenery. Uh, and also, they, I think it makes them think. And I think any movie that makes you think is a great success. Yeah. And it's also a film that finishes with, you know, a call to action, right? This idea that, you know, it's not, it's not the ending that we would have, I mean, I mean, we talk about the ending of a film, but it's, you know, actually the beginning of, uh, the beginning of a journey and the beginning of trying to make change and, um, and the collective coming together, you know, to, to actually create that change. Um, well, thank you so much to both of you for, for you know, spending an hour speaking about the film and uh, and consider yourself part of the La Bocine and, um, and we also organize a festival called Imagine Science and definitely- There's cross fingers, so maybe, maybe we, see, we see you in October in New York. It sounds you good have to, to me, you eh? have to it sounds to good to me. Let's we, get well, the we scene, man. <laughs> We could we could also show Sanctuario. Maybe we could have like a special screening in in, in New York for sure. Um, sure. So if we can get out of this pandemic um, by October, definitely we will. We will. We will. We will.